common refrain in the car world these days. You know, we're gonna hit full electrification across our lineup by 2025 or 2030 or even 2040. And indeed, more and more governments are mandating this, so manufacturers really don't have a choice. But amongst all this, though, it was a little company from Sweden that really got the ball rolling when they announced, well, it's about, gotta be five years or more ago now, that they were going to be full electrification across their lineup by 2025. And the vehicle I'm driving here today, the 2021 Volvo XC40 Recharge, is one of the pillars in Volvo's quest to reach that goal. In the case of the XC40, Recharge means a fully electric vehicle, or battery electric vehicle, or BEV. But there are some vehicles in Volvo's lineup, some plug-in hybrid vehicles, that also use the Recharge nomenclature. But not here though, this is fully EV with a 78 kilowatt hour battery, costs about $65,000. We're gonna take it for a drive in Vancouver and around the city as well to see what electrification has done for the XC40. tell from looking at it though well I guess you can the one main difference is that there's no more grill here you don't need the cooling because there's no engine instead what you have in the front if you'll just bear with me is a very Porsche like front as you can see right here pop, pop hood, and you've got this nice front in here we'll give you a close-up look of this as well so that's really really cool and what it helps do is alleviate some of the cargo or to return i should say some of the cargo room lost with the switch to ev because they had to find some space for the battery in there but cargo room was the only thing affected there's no difference with regards to passenger space in here than there is in the gas power xc40 other stylistic di differences include special badging we've got recharge logo right across the uh, c pillar here but that's about it and there are some special uh wheels as well that measure either uh, 19 or 20 inches I believe these are 20s they are and so but it's a good looking car overall I like the two-tone color white with black roof very very cool nice wheels and of course the fours hammer headlights as well which is a Volvo signature so I like the look of it let's have a look inside so one of my favorite parts about the XC40 when it comes to the entrance and egress is not how easy it is to do which it is that's not a problem is the fact that you don't need to do anything once to, to open the doors to unlock anything. As long as the key fob's in your pocket, you open the door, it'll unlock automatically. You don't even have to hit a start-stop button. You hit drive or reverse, and you're off. I think that's a really kind of secret handshakey way of doing things. Otherwise, in here, it's pretty standard Volvo XC40 fare. Um, there's very few differences. You've got a few extra screens on here for your powerful and all that kind of stuff. And, of course, I've got Android Automotive in here. Not Android Auto. This is the Android develop or, or Google-developed android car infotainment system so you can log into your google account from here and you can have access to all of your google stuff through this thing that's really cool but right now there's no support for apple carplay and there's no serious satellite radio support right now either which is surprising volvo says that it is coming but in this early vehicle i have it's not quite ready which is too bad because i use an iphone but that's me uh digital gauge cluster as well battery level 90 percent um, um, fast charging, level two charging, all that kind of stuff.
stuff, charge cable in the back, two USB-C ports up here, uh, wireless charging is nice to have, but it's all about charging this car, isn't it? It's called recharge after all. Um, and kind of some cool kind of aluminum treatment here on the, on the dash, that's really cool looking, kind of a 3D effect, which I rather like. This is pretty standard though, nine inch vertical display, almost every Volvo, not almost every Volvo has this. Harman Kardon audio, which is cool. I don't think the gas one has a touch sensitive um, sunroof here, which this does. You just slide your finger up and down there. I can't because my camera's mounted there right now, so I won't, but that's a little bit different as well. I don't know, why do we need to have a touch sensitive um, button up there? I just don't see the point. I'd rather have a regular button anyway. That's me. I'm probably a Luddite that way, I guess. But anyway, so that's the uh, front seat of this vehicle. Nice looking, fairly roomy too. I'm six foot three and I'm comfortable here. Got good headroom. It's a very tall roof in the XC40, so that's great. Um, and nice thick rimmed steering wheel as well. I don't love this shift lever though. It's kind of finicky. You have to hit it back twice to get drive, forward twice to hit reverse. I don't see why you couldn't just do it once either way. Almost every other car that has an electronic shift lever like this, you hit it once and it gets you there. So I don't know why Volvo does that. It's probably a safety thing, but I'm not a huge fan. So as I mentioned in the intro, the XC40 Recharge doesn't lose any passenger space to its non-recharge brethren, you could say. There's just as much room in here as there is in the regular XC40, which is really, really nice. Huge headroom. Look at this. Now, of course, the sunroof, the sunroof shade is open. This, if it was closed, there'd be less headroom, but then, you know, just don't close it, I guess. You're going to be putting a lot of tall people back here, but lots of headroom. Legroom's not bad. The seat is fit for a tall driver myself. I can still get my knees ahead of me. They're bumping up against the seat back a bit, which is plastic. That's too bad but it's not too bad back here and the seats i should say are a little on the flat side but like many other compact crossovers i've driven they're flat because it makes folding the rear seat a little bit easier to do this is a 60 40 split folding rear there's no pass through door which is too bad but you'll still be able to haul longer items which is nice i've got a seat heater back here to three levels pretty cool two usb c ports got my armrest with flush mounted cup holders here this is a nice back seat that Volvo seems to think its owners are really going to use. I mean, what does a kid in the car seat care about having a heated seat? But you have it here anyway, so that's nice. Uh, they've done a really good job with the packaging here for what is essentially a compact crossover. So, yes, this is the 2021 Volvo XC40 Recharge. Um, it's a full EV vehicle or BEV, battery electric vehicle, however you want to call it. Uh, which means there's no backup gas power of any kind. All I've got here is a 78 kilowatt hour battery, 75 of which are actually usable, and about 300 and I think it's 350 thereabouts kilometers of charge. I'll put the exact claimed figure on the screen here when I get that. Um, so that, um, I will get to the cut of the trace right away. That's less than you're gonna get from model from the Tesla Model Y, which is obviously a big competitor for this vehicle here, but Whenever I say that, I, I wonder why I bother because the Tesla, there's no real, really two ways about it. It's the leader when it comes to range. You just, you can't, nothing seems to be able to beat them. They have been able to develop their EV platform from the get go as an EV vehicle. This is a Volvo XC40 to start, which has been given an recharge EV powertrain after the fact. So you're going to have that discrepancy there, but still 300 and whatever it is, 50 kilometers of range uh, is, is good. It's a small vehicle. Um, you know, to me that suggests it's going to be used for a lot of people mainly as a city round a city runabout, I should say, which is fine for an EV vehicle. You charge the battery as you brake. Uh, there's one pedal driving, which you can activate with a press of a button as I'm going to do right now. Well, press of a couple of buttons. There we go. One pedal drive. So now I've got one pedal drive. All I do is release the throttle. And as you watch my body here, the braking goes right away almost full power uh so and that gives you the regen what it's doing is i believe it's running ev motors backwards to help fr to build friction to regen the battery so if you're in town most of the time you can plug in in the evenings you'll be fine with this vehicle uh it is level two capable it's also level three dc fast charge capable uh up to 150 kilowatts of charge rate that isn't the fastest EV charger out there. Um, the Porsche Taycan, for example, can make can do, I think, something like 270 kilowatts of charge rate, but that's still enough for this vehicle here to charge its battery from zero to 80% in something like 40 minutes thereabouts.
out. So if you happen to know where there's a DC fast charger on your daily drive or whatever, you can go plug in there for a while, grab yourself a coffee and charge it up. And of course, with Petro Canada, with ChargePoint, Electrify Canada, all sorts of um, different charging networks out there. They all have their own apps to help you plan your route and so on. So that's the kind of um, the nitty gritty of this for now. Uh, I've got 402 horsepower and 486 pound feet of torque. Yeah, that's right, this little tiny Volvo XC40 is almost 500 pound feet of torque. That's like a Mercedes AMG figures. Not even Mercedes like like fake AMG, the non one man, one engine vehicles. Proper AMG V8, uh, like the GLC 63, for example. I don't think that makes that much more torque than this does, if any at all. So this has got some performance and it's enough for a zero to 60 time of under like uh, five seconds, Volvo says, which is like, all right, cool. I guess that's cool. I mean. Whoop, test some of that right now, as you can see. And of course, that's the beauty with EV motors. You have direct power, it's direct drive, no transmission delays, and so on. And that's always a fun thing uh, to have with these. Um, so, so yeah, that's uh, that's that, that's the the nuts and bolts of this. We're gonna take this on a bit of a drive. I'm gonna be in the city a bit. Gonna go find some bendy roads. Hopefully, see how the handling is, uh, because the batteries are mounted low in the vehicle. That brings the COG, the center of gravity, down. Should be better for handling and better for controlling body roll as well. So we're gonna go have a look at that too. So it's got all that great inner city stuff, you know, the one pedal driving. Which, by the way, when you turn it off, make sure you remember you turned it off because. You might find yourself, as I have on a couple of occasions, going, releasing the throttle and going, why am I not stopping? Then realizing I have to go to the brake. So that's just a body muscle memory thing. But uh, anyway, worth noting. So yeah, it's great that it's got the one pedal driving. It's pretty smooth in the city, a bit firm in some cases. Again, I've got really big tires, uh, really big wheels on here as well. So that, you know, is probably going to play into that a little bit. Nice in the city. But what about out on the highway where you really get to feel that uh, 480, whatever it is I said before, uh, pound feet of torque. And out here on the highway, it's great. You really you really get that oomph. Now, of course, being an EV vehicle, you're never gonna get the long linear acceleration that you do at the very beginning on tipping. That's just how these EVs works, uh, these EVs work. But still, pretty good response at almost any speed uh, here for the first, you know, kind of slug of acceleration that you get runs out of steam a little bit after that. But that's a it's a quick car out here on the highway, and also on the highway that's you know a highway like this one I'm on, which has some turns in it. Is where you really get to feel that lower center of gravity the XC40 Recharge has, thanks to that heavy battery being mounted low down, so you get really nice turn in here. Um, even more so when I've got steering in heavy mode here. Uh, there aren't a lot of driving modes in this that there are in most Volvos. You don't have the recharge mode or the sport mode, whatever that you might get in the S90 T8 recharge, for example. Here, all I've got is the one pedal drive selector and uh, steering wheel firm and off-road mode, which apparently is here. Apparently, not many people are going to be using that, but it is all-wheel drive, just not in the typical sense. There's no differentials to speak of, no drive shaft. In order to get all-wheel drive, you've got an EV motor on the front axle and an EV motor on the rear axle as well. And that's how you get your all-wheel drive-ness, if you will. It also helps uh, contribute to that immediate power delivery as soon as you tip into the throttle. Uh, but what I do like about this new kind of take on Volvo's infotainment system is you don't have to swipe all over the place to find the menu that gives you all of your uh, driving aids and stuff on it like you do in other Volvos. That's kind of annoying to do. The menu is very text heavy. It's hard to read when driving. A little bit distracting. Here, it's all in a nice vertically aligned um, menu here under driving in the settings section and that's all there is to it. You play with it all through here so it can be done relatively quickly. But out here on the highway now, this is uh, really, it's really fun to just give it a little bit of uh, and know that you're making no noise whatsoever, but you're zipping past traffic at a good rate of speed. So that's actually a really, really, really cool feature. I mean, it's hard to say that EVs are slow. They definitely are not that. Um, uh, as far as range goes, so far, I mean, I started with about 90% of a charge when I got this vehicle. I have since driven about 25 kilometers is what I've driven so far. And I've used less than 10% of my battery, which is nice. Now, of course, a lot of that 
has been done in the city, which is where these EVs are at their best. Uh, so I'm sure as I keep, as I stay out here on the highway a little bit more, I'm about to do some climbing here in just a minute as well. I'll start to f uh, see it kind of go down a little bit after that. So, but that's, that's not bad. Um, um, again, the 350 kilometers of range, whatever it was I mentioned before is what it is. Um, but more important of course is, is, is being able to kind of, um, control how the charge is being used and in that vein I've got a charging menu as well which allows you to choose what your charge limit is I don't really know I'm sure if I thought more about it and maybe I'll explore this more in the full review of this vehicle which is going to go to onto123.com soon I don't really know why you'd never want to have a fully a full charge rate it says here 90% is recommended I guess to preserve battery so I guess that's really the the main reason why you'd want to not full it fully charge it all the way every time because that is more strain on the battery in the long run so you can set it to different things here anyway um but yeah I'm at 81% now started about 90 just driven about 25 kilometers that's not bad uh, that, that's not bad at all. Um, and of course, we mentioned before, I've got fast charging if I want to do that and all that kind of stuff as well. Um, so so that's uh, really nice. And plus out here on the highway where, uh, you know, the goings get a little bit quicker, so you should be getting some more wind noise, maybe get some more road noise. It's actually still quite serene in here, which is really, really nice. Uh, that's like one of the big pluses, I think, of EVs is that you they're very quiet and they're almost they're quite relaxing to drive actually and i think that's what people like about these and here it's it's no different you know to start or to start off you've got all the great volvo-ness you know the great materials inside great leather nice seats and so on but then you've got the ev-ness as well which gives that nice quiet operation which is uh rather good so i'm going through a turn here yeah not a lot of body roll i do feel my body moving a little bit to the outside here uh but that you've got that that battery keeping the center of gravity nice and low down which is good for it's good for handling but it's also good for comfort um, as well so so all, all good stuff there but it's not a performance SUV that's not what it's meant to be even though it does have all that power um, it's a, it's it, but it's one that if you want to give it some uh, you know give it some throttle every so often it's gonna respond with a with a pretty um, uh, enthusiastic response which is you know I'm not gonna complain so about a that. quick update on range as we come to the end of this test uh, as I said before um, or if I didn't I'm saying it now uh, I started with about 90% of charge on here and I've since driven about 65 kilometers thereabouts and I'm down to 66% of charge so um, you know and a lot of those uh, kilometers were spent actually driving up some some fairly steep grades in the mountains and it's kind of cold outside so we've got the heat going and so on so that gives you an idea of what we're talking about when it comes to the, the range of the XC40 the only thing I have an issue with is that for some reason in all their wisdom Volvo has decided not to include a kilometers left you know kind of infographic until you hit the 25 kilometers left um uh, level, which they say has to do with reducing range anxiety in some way. At least that's how I understood it from their explanation. But I have I have trouble with that. Um, I I think everybody would like to know what kind of range they're dealing with all the time. So it's a bit of a strange decision. I've got a percentage here, a battery percentage. So at least you can go with that. But I don't have kilometers. And and you know you can say uh, in addition to the range anxiety thing, you can say that it has to do with the fact that you know as I just explained kilometers depends on the hills you're climbing the uh the temperature outside how much of uh, the interior accessories you're using or the onboard accessories you're using and I, I get that but most other manufacturers give you a, a a kilometer range all the time and most other manufacturers are making evs and phevs so um not really sure i'm with volvo on that one but uh there you have it so there's all that wonderful stuff going for the XC40. You've got the surprisingly spacious interior, the great materials being used inside, the very responsive and powerful EV powertrain, the Harman Kardon audio, all of that great stuff. Comfortable seats, as is you know kind of Volvo's way, and that's all fantastic and that's great. But there's a problem, and it has to do with pricing. The XC40 Recharge is about sixty-four and a half grand. 
And that is about 12 grand or so more than it would cost you to get a similarly equipped non-gas powered, or sorry, non-EV powered XC40. That's not the biggest issue. The biggest issue is the fact that that price means it is not eligible for any federal or provincial rebates. Uh, when it comes to EV purchasing. Now, I've spoken with many EV manufacturers before and they say that rebates aren't actually as big of a buying incentive for 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 buyers as you might think. Uh, they like the idea that they're driving an EV car, that the environmental impact that they have. They like the fact they're saving money on gas and so on, but the incentive's not a big deal. But still, a small comp or a compact EV like this to not be eligible for some of that pr pricing, that's a, that's a bit of a tougher pill to swallow, I think, at this level. So uh, you want to keep that in mind when considering your options here. Thank you for tuning into my review of the 2021 Volvo XC40 Recharge. Uh, if you haven't already subscribed to the channel, please do. If not, no hard feelings, of course. You can follow me on Twitter at DanTheWheelMan and on Instagram at DanTheWheelMan as well. And look for the full review and pics of this vehicle on Auto123.com soon. So thanks again for tuning into the video. Until next time, sayonara, folks.